Hey guys, uh, so I thought we would start with some videos. Uh, I'm going to make this a quick one and then I'm going to turn uh, it over to the Khan Academy videos on this subject because um, he does a good job, but I feel like it could use a little bit more of a, a gentle intro, just the basics, okay? And then he goes into an example, so that's a good, it's a, a good run of videos, it's four videos. Um, so let me know how you think it's going if uh, if I could do something differently, better, whatever, just let me know. Um, but I think this should work pretty well. Um, so let's get into it. So we have a need right now to learn about a different kind of function, okay? You may remember polar functions. We had a different kind of uh, basically a graphing system. We'll get into that later, but we're actually gonna talk about something called uh, parametric functions, okay? So let me show you how a function could be different than I mean, what, what makes a function a certain kind of function? How does this all work? So typically we find um, a function like this, f of x. Uh, that is, the output is a function of the input. Uh, that's pretty basic. And uh, typically y is a function of x. Okay? We call this just a, a standard function. Just input x and get out y. If I tell you what x is, and you can tell me what y is. Um, and, you know, that's, that's good and all. A lot of times x is time, y is something else. Um, but, uh, in, in the Khan video, we'll go into this more. You know, if you have something that's launching off a cliff, you have two things about it, an x distance and a y uh, height, right? And both of these things are independent of each other. One doesn't really affect the other one. Once we are in the air, we have a vertical and a horizontal component to our position and uh, they're dictated by different things. So um, I'll let him get into that, but I'll just show you basically what could a parametric function be. I don't know if I said the word parametric yet, but it looks like this, parametric. We have parametric functions. The key word here is parameter, okay, parameter. There's a third parameter. Here there are two variables in parametric functions, uh, y, I'm going to write x here so that I don't get confused. I'm going to have x and I have y, and they are going to be their own functions, and they're going to be functions of some other third parameter. Uh, it's going to decide what x is, it's going to decide what y is independently, but then we can take that x and that y and we can graph it like we normally would. Okay. So let's say x is uh, 2x plus 1, and y is negative x plus 3. Keep it real simple here. Um, excuse me, though. That is not supposed to be x, because we're not dealing with x. We're dealing with the third parameter, which is often referred to as t. OK, so um, how do we translate this into, in, into a graph? It's a pretty simple thing. I need to decide what t is. t will tell me what x is. It'll also tell me at the same time what y is. Then I'll know my x and my y, and I can graph it. Okay, so let's just start with uh, negative 2, and then we'll go through these standard ones and see what happens. Okay, so we put negative 2 in here. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, so now we know what x is. Okay, for the same t value, we put that in here. Negative 2 is going to be positive 2 plus 3 is 5. So we have our first point, negative 3, 5. There is the first point. And we have enough points, and it starts to look like a certain shape, we'll connect it, right? Uh, so negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 plus 1, that's negative 1. Negative 1 in here is negative 1, or negative 1 times negative uh, is uh, positive 1 plus 3 is 4. And we have another point, negative 1, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, put a 0 in there, that's easy. That's going to be 1 and 3. Put a 1 in there, that's going to be 2 plus 1, that's 3. Put a 1 in there, that's going to be 3 minus 1, that's 2. Okay, so we got 1 comma 3. And we've got 3 comma 2. Okay, I think you see where this is going. This shape is starting to take form. Um, let's see, if we put 2 in there, that's going to be 4 plus 1, that's 5. Put 2 in here, that's going to be 3 minus 2, that's 1. 5 comma 1. So one, two, three, four, five, comma one. All right, and uh, we certainly are following a trend. It doesn't seem like we're going to break away from that trend. So if we were to plot 
If we were to figure out all the T values that would fill in all the blanks here, we would get a bunch of points that would eventually form this line. Okay, so that's the basics. That's what a parametric function is. It's a very simple thing. And if you, you know, take just a second, let's just take a quick second, and I could rewrite this. Like, this clearly is a, a normal looking function. It's a line. There should be like a y equals mx plus b that would make the same line. You know, and there it is. Here's all we need to do we need to figure out a way to replace this x with, or this t here, with uh, x stuff, right? Like an expression that has x in it. Well, let's take a look here. If I move this stuff around, I can solve for t. I can get x by, or t by itself, so that t is equal to um, x minus 1 over 2. And now this, is, this t is the same as x minus 1 over 2. You know, I could take this and put it right there. So y equals negative x minus 1 over 2 plus 3. Uh, you know, clean this up a little bit. It com uh, combine like terms and all that kind of stuff. And we'll have the equation of a line. Let's see. Let's do that real quick. So we have y equals negative, um, let's make sure we get negative 1 half x. Um, let's see, plus, oh, let's see, 1 half x plus 1 half plus 3. Okay. Um, yeah. And so y equals negative 1 half x. There's our slope, which 1 down 1 over 2. We've been seeing that. Uh, plus, let's see, that's 6 halves, 7 halves. All right, and if I had drawn this uh, graph very well, then uh, it probably would look a lot like the line for this guy here. But here's something. This is a, a point that the Khan videos make in the second of the four videos. Now, I know that for any x, this is the y. But if I think of t as time, then at what time did that happen? I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what time that happened. Right. I can figure it out, I can go back and I can say, well, if I'm going to plug in 2 for x, and then it's going to give me my y, okay, then I'll get 2 and, and get that y, and, and I'll have that point right there. What time did that happen? Well, if I put 2 in for x, I'll just put 2 in for x here, and I'll solve for t, and I'll figure out what t is, right? Um, that's a little bit, I don't know, it's a lot of work either way, or it's a little bit more work either way, I guess. Um, but that's what parametric equations are, parametric functions. Uh, we can use our calculator to graph parametric functions. We can go into mode, and normally your calculator is set to function, right? Normal function. Now we're going to go to parametric function, polar sequence. So parametric gives us these two uh, spaces for each function. The first one will be two t plus one for x, and negative t plus three for y. Okay, oh, I was off. I was off. So I will take this and put uh, 2t plus 1. We'll get this. And then the y is negative t, negative t plus 3. Okay. And then if we're going to look at the graph, we're going to see the graph is just what we have here. Um, I think, let's see what's happened here. So it goes from a t minimum of 0. And you can see when we plugged in 0 for t, that's where we got 1, 3. right? But if we don't allow t to be anything less than 0, we won't get any of this stuff that we get when we put in things that are less than uh, t equals 0. That's why this graph looks like it's incomplete. So if we go over here to window and we make t go to negative 9, make sure to get everything. Now we graph it again, and we get everything. Um, but there you go, your calculator, you can graph those functions as well. You just have to switch over to that mode and then tell x what function it is of t and y what function it is of t, and there you go. All right, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll, I should have already indicated to you how to find those Khan Academy videos and uh, take a look at those. And uh, he'll go into how do we, in a more complex uh, situations, uh, take two parametric equations, you know, a parametric function, and uh, rewrite it basically as y is a function of x, right? We'll do that with uh, trigonometric functions and different kinds of functions like that, all right? Well, thanks for watching.